we could lock right into a real good tight sound and uh, with the way Nashville is these days, I think we'd be right in there with the best of them. There was a period of time before we went to New York City that we wrote lots of songs, but we were more of a rock band at that time. It was really before we had decided to, to go the direction of the country bluegrass, the electric bluegrass side of us. And we, we recorded and, uh, and put together arrangements of some of these art rock, I called it, it was just bits and pieces of all these things we had all written that having listened to them again, I've been going through some of this old memorabilia and listening to the tapes, and there's some great material that we had from before that when we took, went to New York City, they didn't want it. They didn't like it because it was too busy. I'd like to see it continue from a, on an occasional basis and continue to catch, capture the magic. It's, it's a little bit, it's scary. Yet at the same time, it's great fun because every time one of those songs is we strike up again, that's, there's a feeling that's kind of uh, it transcends a lot of uh, a lot of emotion, and um, it just uh, it's very different, very different. When Mission Mountain Wood Band plays, we want it to be an event. We want it to be a real outpouring of you know of uh, of all the energy. And I think if it ever got to be less than that, then, then I think it would be a mistake. And we, uh, we probably are looking at uh, going through the archives and uh, finding some, some of the material, some of the live material, some of the recorded material, and releasing that on CD and tapes as well. There's some great stuff that it's, that's sitting there. And, and, uh, and I, think that, uh, I think that people who uh, liked Mission Mountain would band songs would, would enjoy hearing some of this old material. So I think that that's probably one of the things we'll probably have to do. Getting back together for me is, uh it's a difficult thing to do. It, we all have our own lives. We have businesses, we have jobs, we have families, we have directions that we're going that don't just stop because we want to go, you know, relive some of the past a little bit. Uh, what, what it means to me and what it, what it may mean in the future, I don't have a clue. I like the idea that we can be friends, come out and make some music and enjoy it some old friends that we haven't seen in a long time, possibly do it on a larger scale once in a while and, and just flow with it, see what happens. I never saw him fail, whether it was on a college campus in the southeast, a rock club in, in downtown LA, a jazz club in New York, that's what was astonishing to me, is the, is the, the reach that uh, what they put together actually had and how well it worked and how hard they worked at making it work. I think my fondest memory was the times that we spent in New York City with my brother Dick Riddle in the dressing rooms between shows and after shows before we went on. We were, uh, we had material and we had a lot of promise coming from Montana and we moved to New York to follow that star and uh, we were green as we could be and uh, Dick my brother Dick would take us back into the dressing rooms and just school us and school us and school us on what we were doing wrong, what we were doing right, what to keep, what to get rid of. My fondest memory of the Mission Mountain Wood Band was all the, the touring we got to do. We got to see a lot of the country. We got to see all of the East Coast, the middle of the country, all the way down into Mississippi and Florida. We got to see all of Texas, New Mexico. California, Oregon, Washington. Those are the real nice memories. I mean, you can't trade those for any amount, any, any amount of money, you know, and it's just so nice that we were able to do it at such a good young age and stuff where we had the stamina to keep up with it. That, those are my fondest memories of all the places that we've been, you know. We really knew that we had a cohesive thing when we went up to Glacier Park, and it was in December. I had a friend that had a cabin on the west end of Lake McDonald. And we decided to go up there in December 
when the when there was snow on the ground and and the park was closed and and then uh, then we took a, a walk up the pass and uh, it was a really a really spiritual experience and I had never seen Glacier Park in the winter time like that and we walked almost all the way up to the top of the pass and just spent a wonderful day we came back down and we stood on the west shore of Lake McDonald and sang a song called Find the Cost of Freedom and then listened to the echoes of our harmonies echo off the mountains around Lake McDonald. And uh, I think at that moment we knew we had something that was, that was going to be a little very special. Fondest memory. I think uh, probably the reunion is the fondest memory now because it's the most recent and it, it, it really uh, did a lot for my soul in the way of closing gaps and mending things for me about the whole, the, whole, the entire history of the group. With a propulsive mix of guitar, drums, banjo, bass, mandolin, fiddle, sometimes horn sections, and even congas, and then with this roguish joie de vivre, they blew apart generation and culture gaps in their audiences in Montana and everywhere they went. And I believe that was their greatest gift to all of us. The coalescing with this musical and rhythmic bravado and their reverence for tradition and their irreverence for cliche into this vast and enduring tribe of uplifted spirits. <laughs>